What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is James and this is our med guy. Today we will be doing part three of our RSI series and we will be discussing the post RSI or post intubation stuff. So because we've given them the triangle of anesthesia, well the, the anesthetic triangle more so, is that that is the analgesia, the paralytic, and the sedation, we must realize that these meds wear off at different times and have different effects. What's really important in um, dealing with these patients once you've intubated them is whether you're going to keep them paralyzed. So there is a lot of uh, people who want to just keep them paralyzed the whole time because, you know, that has some pros and cons. So if they are paralyzed, they're not going to be breathing, obviously. They're going to be on their ventilator for longer and they can be a bit harder to manage, especially in the pre-hospital setting. So if they are breathing by themselves, it's actually better for them. Well, because it augments their, their blood pressure, it helps in all sorts of other ways, but it also means that it's safer for them, you know, in case it gets dislodged for whatever reason and now they're breathing by themselves. Or you have to move them from the fifth story down to the the bottom story and if you can just attach a BVM with some oxygen plugged into it and give some pressure into their lungs they can just breathe through that BVM without now having to haul a ventilator down five flights of stories as well as the monitor and carrying the patient and everything else. Sometimes just having the patient breathing is actually easier and more beneficial for us and we also need to realize that it benefits the patient because if they're moving or they're able to contract their muscles, they're moving their blood flow better, they're breathing and they're augmenting their blood pressure, all these benefits. So just be aware of whether you're going to be maintaining the paralytic or not. Let's say you have a traumatic brain injury and you don't want them to be coughing or gagging. Paralytics is a very different story. The other effect that you'll have is that when you get to hospital, the doctors are going to want to do a neural assessment to assess if maybe they're brain dead or whatever the case is that if you have just given them rock like five minutes ago, the doctors are going to have to wait for like hours for that stuff to wear off. So just be thinking about all those things in terms of the paralytics. And then in terms of the sedation and the analgesia, remember that it's all part of that triangle. And so we need to be more aware of pain and sedation. So if a patient is intubated and ventilated and paralyzed and suddenly you see their heart rate spike, that can be a sign of their sedation or their analgesia wearing off and probably their sedation. Another thing you might see is that you might start seeing movement in the patient. Um, I typically have seen people's feet start moving. I don't know why. I've just noticed that if someone's paralytic is wearing off, you'll first see their feet move. Just be very aware of these things, all right? In terms of your sedation and your analgesia, we use 0.5 milligrams of ketamine and we use 0.5 micrograms of fentanyl to maintain their sedation and their analgesia every half an hour. Well, 15 minutes to half an hour. The other thing I want to note is that there is something called analgesia first um, sedation and this is actually um, some of the best stuff you can do out there. I'll drop a link at the bottom but pretty much to summarize is that if you give someone enough morphine or fentanyl they're gonna be sedated and so what that does is it removes the need for lots of um, sedation or like so let's say you're using midazolam or something like that. I know that ketamine wears quite quick, but if you're using midazolam, especially for in-hospital, it's more of an in-hospital problem, more likely, is that you are then able to wake them up. Like, you know, if you need to, like I can say talk to them, but if you need to try and communicate with them, if you're just giving them um, analgesia, you can actually gently wake them up. I've also made a video about a RAS score, kind of like the level of sedation you want in a patient. And, and that's like, positive one or positive two, that means that if you were to tap them or give them a pain simulation, their eyes will open even though they are ventilated. So this is analgesia first. This also helps them get their um, sleep cycles in better because prolonged use of benzodiazepine for, for sedation have or has negative side effects. So that's really that in a nutshell. The other thing then post intubation is dopes. I'm sure you've heard of dopes. So that is displacement, obstruction, pneumothorax, equipment, and suction or stomach. So these are 
five 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 things that you would use to help you assess someone who is now intubated but now they are desaturating so then the tube might have displaced the tube might have moved into the esophagus or so this is to help you assess a patient who's intubated but now is desaturating so it might be because of a pneumothorax it might be because you have an obstruction or because they have now a tension because you've tensioned them or you know maybe they need suctioning and there's resistance so this is just something i'm sure you guys have all heard of it but i had to put it out you had to be responsible and this is for someone who is now desaturating and you need to try and work it out it's kind of like a troubleshooting tool and then in terms of your um, ventilation strategy um, i have also got two videos i'll link them up here that have like pretty much um, break down uh, basic ventilation strategy and then advanced ventilation strategy to try and avoid lung injury and all that sort of thing so you are wanting to assess your uh, plateau pressures you're wanting to assess your peeps make sure that your fio2 and your peep are on the right scale if you have a hundred percent fio2 you should have a peep of like 20 or more and so we should be bringing down the fio2 to what they need and we should be bringing the peep down to what they need and that we shouldn't be afraid of peep in these patients obviously depending on what you're treating if it's asthma peep is not your friend so yeah that's that's pretty much that so in in terms of like little gold nuggets that i could share with you for instance the use of a pocket bougie um it's this like super round um small short bougie that can fit in your pocket it's saved um saved the day many times for me the other thing you can do is that you can put a CPAP mask on a patient who you are busy trying to RSI to pre-oxygenate them. So the other um, two things that I didn't mention in the previous videos would be a delayed sequence intubation. So what this is, is um, if you have a patient who is combative or now they're hypoxic and they're combative or whatever the case is, you're trying to take control you will give them ketamine at about one milligram per kilogram or two milligrams per kilogram whatever you're going to be giving them and then they will dissociate and now you can ventilate them and you can oxygenate them and at this point you can put CPAP on them and that will oxygenate them really well obviously be careful of aspiration and stuff but this is a delayed sequence intubation and this should always be um, part of the tools that you have to use to deal with someone who might need to be intubated especially if they're hypoxic and now you're trying to help them but they're just throwing off their oxygen masks because they are delirious it's important to have a dsi delayed sequence intubation in your back pocket the other thing that we should also be considering is a awake intubation so um, i have intubated myself Using lignocaine it's really not that difficult we should be practicing this if we can avoid paralyzing someone and do a awake intubation we really should because this avoids a lot of the complications that come along with RSI because it is a risk versus benefit weighing always so if you have lignocaine and you have a ET tube really so all I use and the way I build it is I take a syringe obviously with lignocaine I take a uh, three-way stopcock and I take a MAD, which is a mucosal atomizer device or a MAD thing you spray in your nose. If you take off the little white plastic thing on the top of the MAD, you have like a thin pipe and then you have the atomizer at the top. So if you have the syringe, the three-way stopcock and then the atomizer at the bottom, you can stick it all the way into your hyperpharynx and you can spray straight onto the trachea. And then once that's all numbed down, you can just pass the tube. You, you, can, you can use a laryngoscope to pull back and have a look, depending on how the patient is feeling. You give them like one or two milligrams of midazolam just to chill them out a little bit. This is really good for um, inhalation burns. We shouldn't have to RSI a inhalation burns patient if they are co cooperative. If they're not cooperative and you're not sure about the airway, you could always do a DSI. Or you could give them some ketamine, spray the throat and pass the tube. The other video I've also made is at the top here, which is about a physiologically difficult RSI. So that would be your hop killers. You've heard it on EM Crit or all over the place where we are, we should be avoiding three, or not avoiding, but being very careful with three patients. That would be your hypoxic patient, your patient who is in an acidosis, 
in your patients who are hypotensive. So hop H is hypertension, O is for oxygen, and the P is for pH for acidotic patients, because these are all complicated patients. And every time you're going to be performing an RSI or you see an RSI being done, remember HOP and assess if they have oxygenation problems, pH problems, or hypotensive problems, because these are the things that are going to run you into the ground. So be careful out there. Guys, hope you enjoyed this. Um, please hit like and subscribe. If you did enjoy it, please share it with your friends, and we shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.